Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Louisa. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping yourself busy, making lots of jewelry. I know I've been trying to keep myself busy, but mostly I'm trying to come up with ideas for you guys, ideas for videos. Um, and today I want to show you how to make this lovely necklace that I have this on. This was one of the two necklaces that I showed you in my unboxing video for the April Potomac Beads best bead box subscription box and if you haven't seen that I'll leave a link down below so you can go take a look now the the necklace is made with beads called Magatama beads and if you don't subscribe to that box that's okay you can still get them on the internet or just go straight to Potomac beads that would be the easiest place to find them uh, but they're Magatama beads as well as some four millimeter check beads and some seed beads. So I'm going to show you how to make this necklace today. I'm going to show you how to finish the back of it because each one of these components is finished on the back as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and put this down on a tray and we'll get started. All right, let's take a quick look at the necklace before we get started. Um, as you can see, it has four of these components, but today we're going to be making one that has four uh, six components so it'll be a little bit longer and um, I'm going to leave a list of all the materials down below so you can go ahead and, and purchase them ahead of time uh, and I am going to do it in a silver color because uh, I think silver is going to be a little bit easier for you to see especially the back the back's going to be a little bit challenging because these are done uh, these are little 15 millimeter seed beads and so if I do them in silver I think it might be a little bit easier for you to see Okay, so uh, this is the necklace and um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go over the materials real quick. As you can see, um, you're going to need some super duos and you'll need approximately, well not approximately, exactly 48 super duos and you'll need 48 of the long Magatama beads. Now these are the, the um, four by seven Magatama beads. I think they come in a shorter uh, size but these are the 4 by 7 and they're called long megatamas and the color is Picasso green in a matte finish okay so you'll need 48 of these you're also going to need um, six of these um, disc duos and these are six millimeters in dimension and the color is I believe it's silver let's see if I can get that information for you real quick The color is actually aluminum, so aluminum silver, okay? And they're two whole beads. And then you're gonna need um, seven of these uh, gorgeous square flat beads. And these are 10 millimeters in dimension. The ones that I uh, made with the bronze colored necklace from Potomac Beads, uh, these I got on the, um, I got them in the uh, best bead box for March, and these are very difficult to find, okay? So anything that's flat, will be okay you could even uh, use a round colored uh, or a round bead it doesn't have to be square it can be uh, round as long as it's you know between 10 and 12 millimeters here's another version these are round ones and these are actually a little bit bigger that i'm working on it's not finished yet but um yeah just as long as they're flat that's really all you need to worry about okay but be between 10 and 12 millimeters so you'll need seven of those. Then you're going to need some 15 OC beads, and these are Toho beads. So you know a round uh, Japanese seed bead, 15 O size, and then two bead caps. Now these I got on Amazon. They're filigree flower bead caps, and I got a whole bag of these. Um, these are the ones that I want to use because uh, let me just show you real quick what I did with them. So what I did with them is I flattened. I flattened them in order to so that they would fit better on this bead okay because the bead is flat so I took the bead cap and I flattened it very gently using some uh, nylon pli pliers so that it would sit there uh, better because obviously they're round so you want to you want you want them to fit properly so we're gonna flatten these out a little bit okay so you'll need two of those and then some chain now don't cut your chain just yet because you want to make sure that the length is the the right length for yourself okay so we're going to be uh, using two pieces of chain between four and six inches uh, long 
So I would, I would just hold on until you get done uh, and then you can figure out how long you want the necklace. And I've already attached a lobster claw clasp and a couple of jump rings, so you'll need that as well. And then two um, pieces of wire. Now I use head pins because they're, it's, a, it's a much stiffer kind of a metal, much harder metal. So we're gonna use this to attach these um, bead caps, okay? And I'll show you that later on, but you'll need two pieces of wire. Um, I don't think 18 gauge, I think, eight, well, let me see. Yeah, 18 gauge would work okay. You definitely want wire that's uh, relatively hard, okay? All right, so let's see. Oh, and of course you need some four millimeter beads as well. And this color is opaque amethyst luster okay so these are check beads four millimeters in size so you're going to need 48 of these as well all right and like i said i'm going to leave um, a detailed list of all the materials you're going to be needing for today all right let's get started of course it never fails i always forget something you're going to need 14 two millimeter beads and uh, these are two millimeter rounds amazonite and they came with the uh, the March best bead box uh, subscription and um, it doesn't have to be gemstones you can use any two millimeter round uh, I know they're hard to find uh, but if you don't have a two millimeter round I, I suppose you could get away with an 8-0 seed bead but uh, if you can find two millimeter rounds that's preferable and you're going to need 14 of these and of course you're going to need some fire line, six pound fire line. Now if you're doing the silver version like I'm going to show you today, I like to use the crystal color. If you're doing the uh, the bronze version like I showed you earlier, then I would recommend that you use the smoke color. Okay, and then of course the last thing is um, a needle. You'll need a size 11 needle. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I have my needle, I've got it threaded on. I'm going to uh, pick up some of these Magatama beads, that's the first step, and you're going to pick up eight of them. All right, now let me show you a little uh, close-up of this bead. As you can see, it has angled sides, okay? So you need to pay attention to that because when you thread them on, uh, they need to be threaded on exactly the same way, all right? So as you can see, this one is angling to the left. So the next one I pick up, I want to angle to the left as well. I don't want to angle it the other way. Let me show you what happens when you angle it the wrong way. This is what happens, okay? And you don't want that. You want them all facing the same exact direction with the angles uh, going in the same direction, just like this, okay? And if you've never worked with these, it's a little bit challenging at first. You know, it's a little, it takes some getting used to. So what I would recommend that you do is just to go ahead and thread them onto your um, your needle before you, uh, you know, push them down into the, into the thread just to make sure that you're thread, threading them on correctly, okay? Because it's a little bit challenging. You do get used to it after a while. But when I first started working with these, I don't know why, maybe it's a brain thing but uh, my brain was not processing that very well at all and I was struggling <clears throat> you know to make sure that because you have to thread them through uh, you had to have, to have you have to thread them a certain way and the holes are actually not through the center of the bead they're actually on the end of the bead as you can see so that's what makes it a little bit challenging so not only are they angled the thread the hole is actually on the end of a bead kind of like a drop. So that's six. I need another two for a total of uh, eight. Okay, and then check them before you um, push them down into your thread. Make sure they're all angled the same exact way. Okay, and then go ahead and push them down to the end of the thread, leaving yourself about an eight inch tail. Form a little circle, just like this, and then thread your needle through all of the beads one more time. Okay, once you've got that done, pull the thread a little bit, and then 
you're going to do a knot. It's just a regular overhand knot, just like this. But you don't want it too tight, okay? Don't do it too tight. You want some slack because if these beads are too tight, you won't be able to do the next step. All right, so this is what you should have. And then you're going to move away from that knot. So go ahead and thread through a couple of the Magatama beads. And this is what you should have. Okay, now if you'll take a look, there are eight total. I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to thread on a disc geo and I'm going to go to the one directly opposite. So it, it'll go to, through this one here. All right, now the disc geo has two holes, as you can see. So thread that on first and then go ahead and go through. If you're coming out of this side of this bead, you're going to go through this, the right side, the same side of the opposite bead. Okay, you're not going to go diagonally across. You're going to go straight across to the next one, the one in front, just like that. Pull. And that pops that uh, distio on top. Turn your work around so it's easier to get to. So you're coming out of this uh, Megatama bead. Now you're going to go through the, the second hold of the disc duo. And it helps to keep your thumb on it so it doesn't move around. Okay. And now you're going to go through the opposite side of the Megatama bead. So you came out of this one, went through the disc duo, went through this Megatama bead out this side, now you're going to go through the other side of the one that's directly across, just like this. So it kind of forms, it closes the loop. Okay, keep your thumb on it when you pull. And then you're going to repeat that whole thing again. So you're going to go ahead and go through the disc zero. Pull, go through, turn your, turn your work around, go through the Megatama bead on the other side. Pull, turn your work around, go through the second hold of your disc duo. Pull. Okay, now at this point, it's pretty tight. You know, that disc duo is pretty secure on there. Um, Grab the thread bridge that you see right there between the uh, Magatama beads, just like that. And you're gonna do a little um, hit, half hitch knot just to make sure that that disc duo doesn't go anywhere, okay? Once you do that, go through a couple of Magatama beads to get away from the knot. And this is what you should have. Okay, now at this point, you can go ahead and thread a needle onto your tail. And we're going to, you know, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go through a few beads, do a half hitch knot, and then uh, you don't need the tail anymore. This is just to make sure that it's secure. So I'm going to go ahead and thread another needle and I'll be right back. Got a needle on the tail and I'm going to grab the thread bridge that I, that I see right there. Go through the loop. Whoops. You know, this work is fiddly. <laughs> did, I, did I mention that before we started? It's fiddly work. So I know some of you don't like fiddly work, but you know what? It's the nature of the beast. Bead weaving is fiddly work. So if you don't like fiddly work, maybe this is not the video for you. It's very fiddly. I won't lie to you. Okay. So go through a few beads and then, you know, you might want to do a second one. It's up to you. I... I don't agree with doing a million knots. I see some beaters out there that do a million knots. I don't know what they think is gonna, is gonna happen, but a couple of knots is good enough. And then always move away. Whenever you do a knot, move away from it before you cut your thread because um, it's just always good practice to do that, okay? That way you won't have any issues later on. So move away, a couple of beads down, away from the threads, from the knots. 
And then at this point, you can either snip your uh, knot or use a thread burner. It's up to you how you want to do it. Okay. I like to use the thread burner. It's just easier that way. All right, so now we have the distua in place and now we're going to do go to the next step. So the next step is uh, pretty easy, but I don't want you to I don't want you to freak out about this one because um, let me just grab the needle. Here we go. Um, the The way we're going to do this, we're going to insert now. We're going to thread on a super duo in between each of the magatama beads. Now, there's only one hole on the Magatama bead, okay? So just go ahead and thread your Super Duos on. Don't worry about how they sit or whether they sit in between because these Magatama beads are going to actually sit above the Super Duos later on. They're not going to be, the Super Duos are not going to fit between each of the Magatama beads, okay? I know that's probably what you want to do, uh, <laughs> your instinct, but... Um, don't worry about it, just thread them on. But you know, you want to make sure they're, they're snugly in there. You don't want them too loose. And you're going to thread on a total of eight. So there'll be one super duo in between each Megatama bead. And the more that you thread on, the tighter it'll get. And you, you're going to see that those super duos are not going to want to sit in between the Magatama. You, you don't want that. You want them to be underneath so that the Magatama beads uh, look like little petals sitting right above the uh, Super Duos. All right, so go ahead and continue until you get to your last one and I'll meet you back. All right, so I'm at the last Magatama bead as you can see. I've got a Super Duo on my needle and I'm going to go through the last one. Now it gets really challenging uh, because it gets pretty tight but angle your needle a little bit and you should be able to go through that next that last uh, Magatama bead all right and like I said they're going to sit below the Magatama beads they're not going to sit in between but you definitely want them to be snug okay so I've got all of them threaded as you can see it's already starting to uh, form my little component that's what we want and now we're going to go through now that you've gone through uh, the Magatama bead, you're going to go through the Super Duo, the next one, which is a Super Duo, and one more Magatama bead, just like that, okay? And one more Super Duo, just like this. All right, so now you're coming out of that super duo on the first hole, the lower hole, and you're gonna turn your work around and go through the upper hole of that same super duo. It's kind of like a step up, okay? And now it, gets actu it actually gets easier because now you're gonna work with a four millimeter round. So pick up a four millimeter round and go to the next super duo Go through the, that uh, outer hole, just like that, okay? And continue doing that all the way around. Whoops, I just knocked the camera. All right, so. Once you do that, it's gonna straighten everything out and um, it'll start to look a little bit better, okay? Initially, it's a little wonky, I'm not gonna lie to you, but the more beads that you add, the tighter the work gets, and it starts to form a really nice shape. So go ahead and continue going all the way around. Add your eight uh, four millimeter rounds and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm at the last one now. I've got my last uh, four millimeter threaded onto my needle. I'm gonna go through that last super duo, and then I'm gonna go through the four millimeter round, the first one that I added. And tighten the thread a little bit. 
Okay, so now you're going to go around two more times through the round, the four millimeter rounds and the super duos. Do that two, and you could even go three times, but I don't think it's necessary. I like my work really tight, but you know it all depends on what uh, on your ten the tension of your thread. So I would say two times, go all the way around two times, and uh, I'll meet you back. All right, I'm back. I've gone around twice and it's looking pretty good. It's pretty tight. I don't see the, uh, too much of the thread and I'm coming out of, out of a four millimeter round. All right, so now we're gonna finish the back. So for that, you're gonna need your 15 O's. All right, so you're gonna pick up nine 15 O's. So here are my nine 15 O's. Make sure you count them. I can't tell you how many times I've missed a bead and then I've had to go back and undo things. It's very frustrating. You're coming out of a four millimeter round, so now you're gonna go through the opposite end of it, through the super duo next to it, and then the following 15 O, I'm sorry, the following four millimeter round, just like this. And when you pull your thread, it'll form a loop, just like that, okay? So again, pick up nine 15 O's. Here are my nine 15 O's. And go through the opposite end of the four millimeter round that you're coming out of. Okay, and through the following super duo and the next four millimeter round. And that's what you should have. And you're gonna to continue to do that all the way around. Eventually these are gonna fold over just like this. But go ahead and do the next um, six uh, loops and I'll meet you back when you get to your last one. All right, I'm back. I'm coming out of that last four millimeter round. I've got my nine uh, 15 O's threaded on. I'm gonna go through that four millimeter round, the super duo ne uh, next to it, and the next four millimeter round, just like this. So now I have all of my loops formed, okay? And then uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna travel through five of the 15 O's that you added on one of these loops. And the fifth bead is actually the center bead of the nine, okay? So you're gonna go up through to the fifth bead. And what I usually do is I, I use my needle to push that loop out so I can see where the, uh, the center bead is. Okay, just like that. All right, so now I'm coming out of that center bead and all of these are gonna fold over. And by the way, guys, this is just my way to finish the back of one of these components. You may have seen people doing it different ways. It's one of those things that you have to figure out on your own. You gotta experiment and figure out how many beads you're gonna need. Um, I need nine for this project, but there have been times when I need less. There are different ways to do it. This is just my way that I had to figure out on my own. Um, so the next step is to add two 15 -0 seed beads. So here are my two. And I'm gonna to go to the next center bead of the, of the nine in the next loop, okay? So make sure you count them so you don't make any mistakes, okay? You wanna to go to the fifth bead of the next set of nine. Just like that. Pull, and that pulls those two loops towards the center of the component. So again, add two, um, add two 50 nose to your needle, okay? You're coming out of that center bead. You're gonna go to the next set of nine and go through the fifth bead again, which is this one right here, okay? And pull. And as you can see, it's beginning to close up the back. So continue doing that, adding two 15 O's in between each loop until you get to your last loop and I'll meet you back. My two beads are in between each loop and I'm at the last one. So I'm gonna go through that center loop of the first uh, set that I started from. Pull. And as you can see, that closes it even more. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go through the first two that I added in this round and pull. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to skip the center bead of the next loop and go through the next two and pull. And again, skip the center bead and go through the next two and continue, you're gonna continue doing this all the way around. Okay, so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. Once again, remember you're skipping the middle C bead of the loop, okay? You're only going through the pairs. Those are the only C beads you need to do in this round. You need to go through in this Close round. up so you can see what I'm talking about. I want you to make sure you understand how to do this, okay? so that when you pull, it brings them closer. Gone all the way around, and now I'm gonna go around one more time just to tighten things up a little bit more. So just the two beads all the way around one more time. Go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. So I've gone around one more time. I'm coming out of uh, two beads and I've threaded on three 15-0 seed beads and now you're gonna skip the next two and go to the following two and pull. All right, and this is what you should have. So again, you wanna thread on three 15 0 seed beads. Here's my three. And once again, you're gonna skip the next two and go to the following two, just like this. Okay. Pull. Okay, so that's what you should have. And again, pick up three 15 0 seed beads, just like that. Skip the next two and go through the following two. Just like that. Pull. And we're gonna do that one more time, so pick up 15 0 C bead, three 15 0 C beads. Skip the next two and go through the following two and pull. So this is what you should have. And now you're going to travel through to the second bead of the first set of three that you added, which is the center bead. All right, so I'm coming out of that center bead and I'm gonna to go to the following set of three and go through that, that second bead, which is the second, the, the center bead and pull. And every time you do that, as you can see, it closes it up even more. All right, so just make sure that you go to the correct bead. It's the second one out of the three of the next set and pull. And we've got one more set right here and pull. Okay, and now you're gonna to go to the first center bead that you started from in this round. So there should be four center beads. Can you guys see that? And pull, and that closes it up, okay? So now I'm gonna go around the four beads a couple times just to make sure that it's nicely closed. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've gone through the center four beads a couple of times to tighten it up. As you can see, it's all nicely closed up. And so now I'm gonna make my way out to one of these four millimeter beads, okay? And the other thing that I wanna do is at some point do a little knot somewhere. All right, and there's no, there's no real method here. Just kind of make your way around to through the beads until you get to the outer edge where the four millimeters are. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna go underneath and grab a thread bridge. It's a little tricky because everything's really tight, but you can do it, you know, you really don't even need to do this step. I always do just to make sure that um, my work is, you know, 
secured properly. So go underneath and then go through the loop to do a half hitch knot. Okay, and then finish off by going through some more seed beads. Pull to get that knot inside the seed bead so you don't see it. And position your thread along the edge and go through a four millimeter bead, just like that. And that's it, you're done. Okay, it wasn't that difficult. I guess it was a little bit difficult, but um, it's not too bad. You know, the more you do these, the easier it gets. So now you're gonna do another five just like this, nothing different, okay? Now you're not gonna cut off your thread, you're gonna keep your thread on there because you're gonna need the thread later on to put the whole thing together, okay? So keep the component and the thread that's left over. And you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna do five more of these for a total of six. All right, so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. All right, I'm back and I have all of my components uh, built, as you can see, and yes, I know it's a lot of thread, but you know what? I'd rather have more thread than not enough thread. So more than likely, you know, once you get the hang of how to do this, you'll be able to just, you know, finish off some of the components and have thread just on a few. You don't need thread on all of them, but I wanted to do it like this to keep it easy for you guys. This is the arrangement we're going to make and we're going to put these square beads in between each one. As you can see, it looks very pretty already and it's not even put together. These are absolutely gorgeous. I love these Amazonite two millimeter rounds. The problem though is that the holes are really tiny. Okay, so I had to thread on, connect everything in a way um, that would prevent me from going through each one of these beads more than once. Uh, that's really all they can accommodate. Okay, now if you use other types of beads, I mean, you could even use 11 O's if you wanted to in, in a turquoise color or 8 O's, like I said earlier, in a turquoise color. You could go now, through. Now, before we put all of these once, components together, these I wanted so to show you a diagram these gemstones, uh, which shows you um, all of I'm the gonna beads that do this are going to be connected way, and the ones that so are that highlighted and the ones that are going to be once, connected. Right? So when we get done with, the, uh, with this video, I want you to take a screenshot of these uh, connections so that you can refer back to it when you go to make your own connections. So as you can see, each one is connected with a series of seed beads. And then the bottom one is a little bit different. As you can see, the drop is hanging off two four millimeter rounds instead of one millimeter round. So that makes it a little bit different of a connection. All right, so I want you to take a closer look at that and um, you'll notice that coming out of those two four millimeter uh, rounds are a series of seed beads but instead of having sets of three that first set is actually a set of four so I'll just leave this on the screen a little bit so you can study it as you can see it's quite different than the other connections all right and the reason I'm doing this is because I, I wanted to save on um, time I didn't want this video to be extremely long because it does take time to put this necklace together okay so when we get done take a screenshot of this diagram so that you can refer back to it when you go to make your own connections and for now I'm just going to show you how to connect one component with the other um, so it'll be a total of two components and then you're just going to have to come back to this diagram and figure out how to connect the rest of it yourself all right so let's get started Back. I've got my components here. I'm going to connect them. I'm coming out of a four millimeter round bead and you can come out of either side. It really doesn't matter. You know, if you happen to be on the other side, that's fine too. And uh, by the way, what I'm about to show you may be different for you depending on um, the brand of beads that you use. Uh, but, you know, just give it a shot. And if it's not enough beads, you can always come back and add more. But we're going to start by adding six 15 0 seed beads. Here are my six. Grab your square bead and go through the hole. So now you have this, okay? And it's going to sit on top like that. All right, so now you're going to grab another six 15 0 seed beads. And you're going to go back through 
the four millimeter round that you started from. Okay, just like this and pull. So this is what you should have. So now you're going to go through the first six set of six 50 notes that you added like this and pull and back through the square bead and pull. Okay. All right. So now we're going to add another six 50 nos. You're going to put down your component, grab the other component, and then you're going to go through a four, a, a four millimeter round. Now you need to pay attention. All right. So if you, if you'll take a look here, this is how you're going to connect it. If you're coming off this side of the square bead, you're going to go down this way. All right. You don't want to go the other way. You're going to go down the same side of that round bead, the same side as the square bead. Okay. And I'm putting it down so you can take a, a better look and this is what you should have. Okay. So now you're going to grab another six 50 no seed beads and you're going to go back down through the square bead. All right. So if it's like this, you're going to go through that square bead just like that and pull. You want to make sure that square bead is sitting on top, on top of uh, the 15 O's. Okay. It's a little difficult because things are a little bit loose right now, but they'll tighten up as we go along. Okay. All right. So tighten it up and you're going to go back through the the 50 nos that you added before you went to the second component. So go ahead and go through those 50 nos, the six of them like this and pull back through the four millimeter round from the second component making sure you don't get your thread tangled up and pull and then back down the six 50 nos that you added on this side, just like that. And pull, it's kind of like a figure eight. Okay. So this is what you should have. Make sure the thread is nice and tight. Okay. So now we're going to, um, we're going to go ahead and insert the gemstone, the two millimeter or the, whichever one you have, eight or 11 or just make sure it's, it's teal colored. So it coordinates. So grab your two millimeter bead. I said teal, but it's actually turquoise. And then you're coming out of that 15 O you're going to go straight through to the other set of 15 O. So you're not going to go through the square bead at all. You're going to go straight through just like this. Okay. And pull and that will pop the gemstone right in the middle. Just like that. Okay. All right. So now we're down here. We're going to go through the four millimeter round. And back through the 15 nose on this side, just like that and pull. Okay. Grab another two millimeter turquoise bead and go through the other set of 50 nos. So you're not going through the square bead. You're just going through the 15, 50 nos, just like that. Okay. And pull and that pops that two millimeter on that side of the bead. Now, can you guys see that? All right. So now we have the two millimeters on both sides of that bead. All right. Now this square bead is still flipping around. It's not secure. For my liking. I mean, you know, it's okay to have it flip around, I guess, but I don't like it when that happens. So I'm going to do a series of beads now on the back. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and go through that four millimeter bead again and now this time you are going to go through three of the six on this side, only three of the, of the 15 nose just half of them. There are six total. You're only going through half of them. Okay. And you're going to turn your work around. So you're in the back now and pull. 
nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to do a crisscross pattern in the back. So we're going to go from this side to the opposite side, the, up, the opposite corner. So we're coming out of the third bead here. We're going to go into the third bead going in that direction towards the four millimeter because remember we don't want to go through these gemstones more than once. So we're going to go down this way and then to the right. All right, so grab nine 15 0 seed beads this time. All right, push them down and then go to the third bead from the gemstone. So it's actually the fourth one. So you count three and then go into the fourth one, just like that. Can you guys see that? And then go through three. those three, just like this, okay? Pull and that pops those nine seed beads across the back diagonally, okay? So at this point, you go through that four millimeter round, because now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Well, not exactly the same, but similar. So start from the first seed bead and go down three of them like this and pull. All right. And now we're going to go diagonally across this way. But this time you're only going to pick up four 15 0 seed beads. Okay. And now you're going to find the fifth bead in, which is the center bead. Okay, and push your needle through there, just like this, okay. And now we're going to pick up another four 15 0 seed beads, okay. And we're going to go across to the other side now. So again, when you go, you're going through the middle of those six, heading towards the four millimeter round. All right, so you're going through the, the three that are right up against the four millimeter round and pull and that forms your X in the back. Okay, go through that four millimeter round and pull all right and I always like to reinforce so you're going to follow that same path again. You're going to go down through these three, across the nine, up through these three over here by the other four millimeter, through the four millimeter, down through the three, across these now, across these nine again, and then back to this four millimeter where you started. All right, so it's kind of like a figure eight. You're going to go up and around, up and around, and then back down again and through that four millimeter again. All right, so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. All right, so I've gone almost all the way around and I'm going to finish by going back through the four millimeter round that I started from and things do get pretty tight, but that's what happens when you reinforce. Okay, and that's it. And that bead will n never flip around. That bead is going to stay right where it is. And that's what I like about this. Okay. So now, like we did before, um, go ahead and find a thread bridge somewhere, do a half hitch knot and do it a couple of times, thread through a few beads and then burn your thread off and you're pretty much done. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I've got all the components connected. Um, I'm, you know, I, I don't want this video to be very long. So that's why I went ahead and, and did that. Um, as you can see, the top components have two four millimeter beads in between each one. You need to make sure you follow the diagram to figure out how to connect it. And then the bottom one is different because the bottom one, uh, the drop is actually coming off two four millimeter um, beads instead of one. Okay. And so because of that, like I said earlier, instead of adding three uh, 15 OC beads here, you're going to have to add four to accommodate the extra width. Okay. That's the only thing that's different. And then you're still going to come off, you know, uh, three from the, uh, gemstone and do your crisscross pattern. Okay. I hope, I hope, um, that's clear enough. I know it's a little confusing, but I do want to show you real quick how to finish off the end. And I've already done this end. I'm going to show you how to finish off this end. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to build another square component, just like I've done with every, all the other ones. But of course, instead of um, attaching it to another one, I'm going to attach the top end to an 80 seed bead. Okay, and that's what's underneath this bead cap. Okay, and then um, that's how I attached this uh, this eye pin. All right, so. I'm going to go, you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and build my square component with a crisscross pattern in the back. And I'm going to attach the 8O so you'll see how I've done that. And then I'll be right back and I'll show you that, okay? And by the way, I know some of you are very observant. Um, <laughs> this is the wrong uh, four millimeter bead, okay? I'm supposed to come off this one here. So I have two empty ones. All right, and I wanted to clarify that because I know some of you are watching pretty closely and um, I'm pretty sure somebody will notice it. So, all right, so this is where you want to begin that um, component at the end. All right, you want to start on this one here with two free ones. So you're going to leave these alone and you're going to attach your square component uh, right off this one. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll come back. All right, so I've attached it to uh, this four millimeter. I've got six 15 O's threaded on. Now I'm going to thread on the eight O, okay, and then another six 15 O's. Okay, I've got everything threaded on there. So now I'm going to go back through the whole of the square bead. And pull everything nice and tight. Okay, so this attachment here, this 80, is like another uh, component. This is what I'm going to use to um, anchor the, uh, the the eye pin. Okay, this one right here. So you're going to continue finishing this component, co going down and then finishing the back with the uh, crisscross pattern. And make sure you add your um, gemstones, just like I did here. Okay, add your gemstones. Do the crisscross pattern and then exit off that 80 and I'll come back and do the bead cap portion. All right, I'm back. As you can see, I attached the uh, square component. Let me bring it up closer so you can see. I did the crisscross pattern and as you can see, there's my 80 and that's what I, I'm going to attach this uh, eye pin to. Okay. All right. So let me just go ahead and uh, prepare the pin. Now you can use, I would recommend 20 gauge wire, but you know, 18 gauge is okay, I guess. Uh, but we're going to do a wrap loop and um, I don't want the wraps to be really big. So I'm only going to do like one and a half wraps because the wraps are going to be hidden underneath this bead cap and I don't want them taking up a lot of space. So once you cut off the head of your head pin or, or your piece of wire, um, you're going to give it a little kink about an inch down. Okay. And then I like to use a small pair of uh, round nose pliers. Okay. They, they're tiny. And you're going to make a very, very small um, loop. As small as you can get it. Okay. Very tiny loop. So here I'm wrapping it around. I'm switching my pliers around and continue to wrap that around the back. It's a very tiny loop. Okay. And then get your second set of pliers and do your wraps. And like I said, you're going to do, let me just go ahead and grab it this way. This might be better since it's so tiny. You're going to do one and a half loops. Okay, you're going to make the loops, the wraps. You don't you don't want a lot of wraps. Okay, you just don't want a lot of wraps because they'll, they'll take up too much space. So just enough so that the thread doesn't pop out. And you might want to even squeeze it a little bit to get that um, loop to be even smaller. Okay. And then once you've got that, cut off the excess. And definitely tuck the end in as much as you can. Okay. So this is what you should have. All right. So now 
Let me just move these plies out of the way. So now we're going to sew through the loop. We're going to sew through the loop. Pick up your work. So this is what you should have. Okay. And you are going to go through back through the 80. So you're coming out of one end, and you're going to go back through that same 80 from the other end. So when you pull, it anchors that uh, that loop right in there. Okay, and so go through the loop of the eye pin again and go back through that 80 C bead. Okay, eight O's are pretty, um, you know, they have pretty big holes. So you're going to be able to go through that loop, through that hole, about four or five times. I recommend that because you want to make sure that um, that it's secure, okay, and it's not going to ever break. So don't be afraid to go through. Now you don't want to go through too many times because the 80 is made out of glass. And if you go through a seed bead too many times and it gets really tight, it could break. And you don't want to do that. Okay. So I would recommend going through and reinforcing about four or five times. And that should be enough. That should be strong enough. And you should feel confident enough that it's not ever going to break. Okay. I'm not even counting. I think that's I think this is my fifth one. And then after you do your five uh, reinforcements, then you're going to make your way down. See how it's attached? You're going to make your way down through all the seed beads. Okay, and I know I said don't go through the gemstones, but um, you can go one more time, I guess. But the reason I said that is because uh, the gemstones are uh, very delicate. And I've had this happen where I've gone through a second time and they've shattered. So, but just be very careful if you're going to go that, that way. Uh, otherwise, you can always just go through the, um, the crisscross pattern in the back. And so you're going to go through, make your way down to here somewhere, uh, do a half hitch knot, wiggle around a few beads, do another half hitch knot, and burn off your thread. Go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Oh my gosh, this is so time consuming. Okay, so I have this attached, as you can see, okay? And now you simply slip on the bead cap push it down and you can even you don't have to use nylon pliers you can use your fingers just very gently flatten out that bead cap all right just like that these are very easy to to uh, flatten out and then make sure that it's all the way down okay then you're going to grab a set of uh, pliers round nose pliers kink the wire so that it's going in this direction you're going to form your loop this way okay and then again do a wrap loop now this time you can do a few more wraps okay you can definitely do a few more wraps and the loop can be a little bit bigger So I'm going to do about two and a half wraps, something like that. Okay. Snip off the excess. Straighten out your loop if you have to. And then make sure that you tuck in any bits of wire that you that may be sticking out okay you want to make sure you push them in 
And that's basically it. All right, so now the only thing that's left is the chain. I'm so glad we made it. <laughs> it's a very long video. I apologize for that, but there was no other way for me to show you this. Okay. So now you're simply going to attach your, um, your chain using a couple of jump rings. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. All right. Here's the beautiful necklace. Oh my gosh. I love this in silver. I just absolutely adore this necklace. It is so pretty. So I attached the chain. The chain is about five inches. So I measured it. The whole thing is about 18 inches. And like I said, you know, you can make it whatever length you want. And of course you can attach an extender if you need to. But um, yeah, this is really pretty. I love this, uh, this color, this color combination. Very, very pretty. I love the silver. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope um, I've taught you a little bit. I hope you've, you know, I've inspired you. Um, go ahead and go out and, and try your own designs, your own colors, you know, give it a shot. The only thing that I ask is that if you do put it on Facebook, um, please give me credit, okay? Um, I've seen my designs out there where people have um, put it out there and never even mentioned where they, where they got the inspiration. So I would appreciate if you would just, uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to give them my channel or anything like that. You can just say, you know, inspired by Misty Moon Designs or something like that. That would be nice. I would really, really appreciate that. Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm going to go put the other one on and I'll come back to say goodbye. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope I've inspired you to go out and buy different colored beads. Uh, have fun with it. You know, you can, now that you know how to finish the back of uh, beaded components, you can use that skill with pretty much anything. Um, but anyway, guys, go out, you know, have fun with it. Make it as long or as short as you want. You don't have to use all the components that I showed you. You can do less like I have on this one. Uh, for me, because I have a small frame, this is actually a better fit. But, you know, make it as long or as short as you want. It's totally up to you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.